Hello and welcome to my latest video. So today we're going to be having a look at the Penguin Main Series paperbacks numbers 301 to 400. Now these are amongst the very rarest of the penguins so there's some real gems to show you in this lot. So that's going to be the subject of today's video. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Right then, so we start with number 301, which is The Three Hunting Horns by Mary Fitt. Not the greatest of copies, but some of these I'm more than more than happy just to own them. And eventually, if a better one will come on my way, obviously I'll upgrade it. But in the meantime, I'm more than happy to, uh, to own a copy. This one's got a little 80 pence there on the front. <laughs> if only, eh? Um, from now on, any sort of crime titles between 300 and 500, you are talking sort of serious money nowadays. And uh, I was just lucky that I was able to pick up what I did when I did. Um, 302, some of these I've bagged up um, just to protect them more than anything. I could use uh, bagging up some of my more fragile ones. 302 is another crime one, which is... Uh, Murder in Hospital. I seem to remember picking this one up at a boot sale many, many years ago, sort of late 80s, I think. And for, for years, it was the only sort of wartime one that I had. Uh, what we'll start to see and what we saw a bit of in the last video is that the actual quality of the paper on these is, is certainly getting worn. And um, that makes these crime books all the more um, uh, sort of sought after and fragile because they just haven't really survived. Um, 303, then the eyes of Max Carados, and these were published in December 1940, just to put these into age perspective. And then 304 is another crime one, half mast murder. Now, a lot of these only ever had one print run, and the print runs varied from 25,000 to 50,000, sometimes more um, at the peak of the Blitz, often less, uh, which makes these even harder to get hold of. Um, these crime books, I mean, that that's probably like a hundred pound, that, that one book on its own. It's just just crazy, just crazy. Now, the next two are actually quite quite easy to get. So um, it's Penguin New Writing, uh, volumes one and two. And Penguin made a bit of a mistake here because they, they released them both with the same number, which is 305. Um, so that's the actual first 305, which is, is this one, volume one of New Writing. And then they just um, released volume two, but they used the same number again. Um, it was a bit of a mistake, but, um, you know, there was a lot going on at that time. So this was actually published in January 1941. So it's a whole sort of a year later for this second one. Um, but I keep them both together as part of the main series. But you may see them uh, turn up in sets of Penguin New Writing. Number 306 is Welsh Short Stories, still in December 1940. Um, this one's got the, the dust wrapper flap still in evidence there. They didn't all have this by any means, with the little box you could cut out there. And you get an idea of just how thin and fragile the paper is by this time. And it's actually going to get worse, if you can believe it. The books actually get even more fragile. So I'm being extra super careful with my copies of these. Uh, 307 is old junk. So if you see any penguin between 300 and 500, pick it up. Uh, even some of the reprints are worth having because um, the collectors will have those just to make do, basically. Um, 308 is Night Watches. W. W. Jacobs. And there's actually two books in the first, in between 300 and 400, that I'm still looking for myself. So um, when we get to those, I will, um, I'll pop a little picture of the ones in, because we are trying to show every single book in the first thousand. I'm actually missing more in the first, in between four and 500 than three and uh, four. Um, so number 309 is Eastern Flights, Alan Bott. Alan Bott uh, went on 
to become a publisher and he formed P Pan Books, which later became a big penguin rival, of course. But Alan Bott, yeah, founder of Pan, B Pan Books, was actually published in Penguin. Quite interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Another travel one here, number 310. My Journey to La Laser, Alexandra David Neal. Quite a robust one for uh, a wartime. Very robust one now, which is number 311. So it's a bit of a bit of a classic, isn't it? Howard's End, E.M. Forster. It may well be that this was... Uh, yes, it doesn't feel quite the same poor quality. It may be that that was actually printed a little bit before some of the other ones that we've already seen. 312 is untouchable. I'm not going to try and pronounce the author's name. 30p. I think it would probably be a little bit more expensive nowadays. This one's in a in a bag because it's quite a sought after one, which is Top Story Murder by Anthony Berkeley, 313. We're into February 1941 now. Advert for Greys. Um, so some crime books had plain backs. Some you know penguins in general had plain backs, and some of them had advertising backs and that would be say the book had a print run of 25,000 the public the advertiser might just pay for advertising on the first 10,000 so that would be why um 314 along this way it's one you don't see very often autobiography of uh, James Weldon Johnson 315 uh, another very sought after title, um, The Land of the Blue Poppy. It's a travels of a naturalist in eastern Tibet. Um, this is still very much sought after as a travel book, one of the uh, very fragile issues. You can see the uh, quality of the paper here. Only ever had the uh, one printing back then, 1941, number 315. 316, this one is a little bit more common, and this is uh, Modern American Short Stories. This is number 316. And the last one in this particular pile is 317, which is another gorgeous crime title, a uh, rarity by Josephine Bell, and that's Fall Over Cliff. Once again, a very, very nice copy of that one. That's the first little wedge. And I'm going to make a tiny bit more room. So let's just pause there a moment. So 318 and 319 are the two part, the two volume edition of I Claudius by Robert Graves. I absolutely love the, uh, the two Claudius books. And Claudius the God does come a little bit later in Penguin, also in two volumes. Um, Penguin did go on to release it in a one volume edition and they just numbered it number 318 so uh, the two Claudius books are particularly nice uh, very early Robert Graves now this is interesting so 320 is sunshine, <laughs> sunshine sketches of a little town by Stephen Leacock and this is interesting because this has got that blank back um, although someone's done a bit of penciling on there um, so this is you know what Penguin collectors would call uh, a bit of a variation. I don't know if I've still got any where they've got, uh, where I've got like a blank back cover and um, an advertising blank cover, but I used to have a few different variations. Now, this one here, number 321, I think is underrated. It's it's actually very, very scarce to find in, in nice condition as, a, as an original Penguin. Uh, Mr. Norris changes trains. It's not the rarest orange by any means but i think um it's much harder to find than um some people might think um but really nice copy of that one actually that's really nice three two one three two two another tricky one that you might need to take a bit of time to track down is the three friends some of these really are you can't understate just how difficult they are to find in first penguin edition some of them never got a reprint until uh, the 1950s so uh, 
they really are quite tricky to track down. 323, this is a, is a bit more common. Um, I Will Maintain by Marjorie Bowen. 323. 324 is False Spring. This is by Beatrice Keen Seymour. Colonus Dental Cream. Toothpaste to you and me. Got a little bit of foxing on the edge there, but these are honestly, these are so, so fragile. I should really have them all bagged up, to be honest. Um, 325 is Men in Chains. Marcus Clark. Uh, notice the price has gone up to uh, nine pence now. And this particular one, although we're in a run from 1941, this actual number didn't actually get used until July 1944. So that's when that one actually dates from. But numerically, as we're going through these, that's where that one fits in. 326 is one that's quite common, and that's cactus. Um, I've had uh, a couple of copies of this. I think it must have been, um, must have had quite a big print run, this one, which is uh, this one by Ethel Manin. Unlike the next one, which is number 327, which is Full House, which is one of the two that I need in this hundred. So I'm still after that one. So I'll pop a picture of it in just so you know uh, what it looks like. 328 is a particularly nice bright copy of Invitation to the Waltz. Rosamund Lehman. Very nice copy of that one. Almost, you could say, as new. Almost. Unfortunately, they're not all like that. <laughs> 329, there we go, the very next one. Another scarce one. Uh, no Walls of Jasper, Joanna Cannon. Very, very scarce and fragile edition of 329. Next one we've got is 330. Oh, and there we are. We were just wondering if we had two editions. So I've got two copies of 330. And one has got the pairs advert on the back and one is a plain back. Yet I would imagine these are both first editions, first penguins. And that's what they were like. So this one here, yeah, that's the first from 1941. And this one with the advert on is the same. So they're both the same printing, both first edition from 1941, but one with a plain back and one without. So um, Jif would have done a deal with, uh, with Penguin there. Look at that there, little turned over corner with Penguin there. And they would have paid for so many copies to have their advert on the back. And then the rest of the run would have been done without any advert at all. Also, that particular book, um, they did publish a second volume, uh, which we'll see a bit later, number 396, and that's published in the yellow miscellaneous covers. Um, but for some reason, they put that edition in the, uh, in the fiction covers. Uh, next is uh, When William Came by Saki, H. H. Munro. Nice copy of that one, number 331. 332, very, very thin penguin. It's uh, The Bridges of San Louis Ray. And when you think just a couple of years ago, oh, no, that's quite nice. Got uh, a nice period review. I used to like it when I find those in them. Um, when you think how robust and gorgeous those early penguins were of just, say, five years prior to this, these, it's just another time, isn't it? And you can see how um, the paper rationing has really taken effect. Obviously, this is 1941, 1942. Britain is in the height of the Blitz. And, uh, well, to keep such a run of publishing going at all was, was frankly a miracle. Um, 333 is Russian Short Stories, another fairly thin little volume. 334 was a biography, and that's the first of those we've seen uh, this hundred. It's the biography of uh, 
Sir Walter Raleigh. Eric Eccleston. One of my favourite authors, H.G. Wells. And this is Kips. And this is Penguin 335. This is a much more uh, robust edition because it's basically a bit, it's just under 300 pages. So um, quite a nice, quite a nice copy of that one. This is Scarce. This is 336, which is Fishmonger's Fiddle. Very, very scarce little book. This one was also... Uh, um, didn't get published until 1942. So I would, although these are all rare, believe me, these are rare books. Um, I believe the period between 400 and about, well, 500, just under, are even rarer to get hold of. Um, 337, so this is actually quite a common, if there was any of them that were more common than others, it's it's um, Jumping Jenny. This one does turn out number 337. Um, this is another one with a plain white back so it may have been the tail end of the run which managed to uh, not get any advertising put on it 338 well this is the first of what would become quite a series in penguin and that's the uh, the famous trials series this is by far the hardest one to get um 338 and um well yeah look the trial of dr crip in there <laughs> uh these are really good if you've never read the famous trials it's a very early true crime and uh Oh, they come recommended those. 339 is High Rising. Angela Thurkle. A bit fox, that one, as you can see. But as I said at the start, on some of these, I'm just glad to have a copy. I don't care what condition it's in. Literally, I'll take them coverless, if that's all it took. 340, Rose McCauley, Orphan Island. Nice copy of that. It's interesting, number 341, which is uh, in the miscellaneous. Um, so this, when it was published, would have been a nice bright yellow. And you can see this has got a bit of ageing on it. Timothy Shy. Now, I always remember this one. It's got quite a funny... Uh, Penguin would do a little biography of the author. And uh, Timothy Shy, all he had on him at the time for his biography picture was... Uh, I believe that's a picture of him as a young boy. <laughs> ah, crazy, isn't it? All for the forces. Very, very fragile little volume, this one. 1941. You can see, you just see how thin the paper is. It's just, there's nothing to it. If you hold it up, you could see literally right through it. 342 is Farewell, Victoria by T.H. White. Another super thin, super rare edition. Very nice bright copy of that one. And the last one on this particular stack is another one by my favourite, The War in the Air by H.G. Wells. A nice robust copy of this one. I've had this one a long time, 343. Penguin published all the H.G. Wells books and this is uh, no exception. Excellent stuff. I really like uh, H.G. Wells. So I'm just going to pause there once more get the next stack ready so the next ones i've got is actually a three volume set so this is oil paint and grease paint the autobiography of the artist laura knight and penguin due to paper rationing published this in three separate volumes when you find them they do usually turn up in sets and i seem to remember i bought mine as a set um i don't think any one is is rarer than the other if you're going to find them you'll probably find them as a set Next one is 347, which is Trade Winds, which is another travel and adventure title. Louis Kornitzer. And then 348 is perhaps one of the most famous rare penguins, and that's um, uh, Biggles Flies Again by W.E. Johns. Now, most collectors agree that this book isn't as rare as any of some of the other ones um but it's definitely in demand because it's uh it's a penguin it's as well as it being a hard wartime penguin it's also a biggles first edition so the the we john's collectors are after this one as well um i believe there was only the one the one printing of it and um 
I was quite lucky. I got this on many years ago. Um, uh, off eBay, I got this one, in actual fact. I um, paid just over, a, I think I paid about £105 for it, which is, um, at the time, was definitely the most I'd ever paid for a single uh, wartime paperback. Um, I've seen these actually sell on eBay um, two or three times now uh, for 500 quid. So if you ever come across one of these, um, and it's really nice condition, this is this is a particularly nice one. There's a very little bit of um, spine fading, but that's bright robust it's perfect inside um you know you are looking at about 500 pound for one of those probably the most expensive penguin out there um but not the rarest i don't think um 349 then so um all the penguin crossword books are scarce some i mean this one's actually not too bad um some of them really are hard to get and um just be grateful to find them in any sort of condition really but that's 349 350 is Silk, a legend, Samuel Merwin, that's 350, and these really are quite delicate and rare books we're looking at now, they really, really are. So I'm not rushing my way through it. Next, a bit of a beaten up old copy, but it is at least a copy, <laughs> and that's 351. He laughed at murder. And now, um, in the next hundred that we've got, um, I was able to replace um, a par part of the cover and the spine of one of my rare books, um, Murder at the Admiralty, and uh, with a little bit from a friend of mine who is a, uh, a, uh, a graphic designer. Uh, so he photoshopped a new sort of cover for me. I reckon I could probably do something with this one to uh, improve it. But for the time being, it's a first edition. It's rare, super, super rare. Um, I'm glad to have a copy in any condition. But that's one on my little list for upgrading. 352 is modern one act plays. And uh, there's one there, The Seventh Man, Michael Redgrave. I don't know if he's related to the Redgraves that we know of today. Bet you he is. Then we've got a little run of crime titles. So 353 is Artists in Crime. Najia Marsh. And these are all very expensive, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> Um, 354 is Murder of My Patient. And these will, you'll find these will be the ones on a lot of people's wants lists. 355 is The Nursing Home Murder. I seem to remember this was another one that I found in the wild. I was lucky to get. I did have a particularly good find of rare crime books. Um, there was a brand new bookshop that had opened and he was predominantly a hardback first edition specialist, but the entire upstairs of his shop was just paperbacks. And when he opened, he said, sign up all paperbacks, um, two pound each or three for a fiver. So I went in, I, he, the guy had probably just finished unpacking his stock and I went upstairs and um, he had he must have had the best part of 2,000 penguins, and I started going through them, and I couldn't believe what I found. I was getting so many rare ones, um, just incredible. And I went back a couple of times afterwards, and I spent the best part of two, 300 pounds with him at the time. Bearing in mind, I was getting three for five, and three for a fiver, that gives you an idea of how many I got. And I was getting doubles of some of them. I remember I got two copies of... Um, the General Goes Too Far, which is another very rare uh, crime book. But I filled in loads of them. I think that may have come from that that little find there. Um, but that was back in the day. We're probably looking at best part of 20 years ago now. So probably not going to get that lucky again. That was 356. 357, another super thin little book here by Mark Connolly. Green Pastures. Now the next one 
is the last one that I haven't actually got for this hundred, and that's 358, and that's the Daily Telegraph uh, crossword puzzle book. So I'll pop a picture of that one in. 359 is another miscellaneous title, and that's The British Infantry Man by Ian Hay. Very nice copy of that one. Very pleased to have that. Obviously, the big money with these is spent on the crime books, but the other ones, you know, depending on how rare they are, um, aren't going to set you back a fortune. Um, 360, Air Fighter Scrapbook. This seems quite common as travel of, as wartime travel and adventure goes. Um, so, you know, I've seen a few, few copies of that, and that's an absolute classic, that particular book. Um, that one's missing a cover price. I see the very faint there, there's a 9D. So the booksellers probably had to just write the price on there. Number 361 is The Green Mirror by Hugh Walpole. A bit more of a, a thicker book there, just, just touching 300 pages. 362, Time Will Knit, Fred Urquhart. Not too bad a copy of that one, considering. 363, another fairly scarce travel title. That's Dialogue with, with Death. Arthur Coatsler. Very, very fragile, these. Treating them with kid gloves. I did resist the urge of putting on any white gloves. <laughs> so 364 is for amazement only. Another one in the sort of the miscellaneous series. There's lots of puzzles and things in there to do. Nice little, uh, nice little book that one. Very, very thin. 365 is another um, wartime title, The Red Badge of Courage. Stephen Crane, a bit of Fox and that. This is one of my older ones that I've had for years, possibly on my, uh, on my list of upgrading. You see the spine there is actually quite got a bit of, bit of loss on it. So that's one I'd like to get a better copy of now that I've had a look at it. 366 is Ballygullum, Lynn Doyle. All of these are so fragile. I just, I do count myself very lucky to have got these when I did, but I have been collecting them for over 30 years now. Um, 368, uh, scarce title, The Silk Stockings Murder. Murders, now all these crime ones are scarce. Now we're now into 1942. And the 19, well, anything between the next three years, you're just talking legendary scarcity. And some of these books, there's so few copies even known to exist. It's just bananas, really. Um, I guess they must be out there somewhere, but blimmin' heck, you know. This is number, this, I think, the second time across is actually, yeah, 367. So... That was actually before the last one. It was slightly out of, out of position, but this is another real scarce wartime crossword book. And that's actually, that goes before the Silk Stockings Murder. So let's pop that one in its position. Next, we've got 369, another travel classic, and that's uh, A Naturalist Goes to War. Philip Gossie. All there. Just about. This next one is number 370. This is quite scarce. This is uh, A Life of Shakespeare. This one's also got a plain back. Um, this was published on the anniversary of Shakespeare's birth and is a little biography of uh, Shaky. <laughs> Look at that. Penguin first, two pounds. Yeah, once again, it's one of those ones that probably be a little bit more than that these days. 371, I've seen. Big money on this book as well, Dewar Rides. Um, it must be one of those scarce orange fiction titles, but um, thankfully I've never had any. I got my copy without too much incident, um, but I've heard it's expensive. Last September, Elizabeth Bowen. So this one um, has seen better days. Uh, another another scarce, scarce, but it looks like it's got a little bit of water damage. It doesn't take much to get to, for these to get beaten up. It really doesn't, but at least it's a copy. 373, another super rare one. Brass Bounder, 
a lot of people finding this one uh, difficult to get hold of. When you think these are virtually almost 80 years old, it puts an appreciation for such delicate bits of, of paper. And the last one on this stack is number 374, which is English captain Tom Whittringham. This one has got a bit of loss on the back cover. So this would be another one I would like to upgrade at some point, but you know, like all these wartime ones, they don't exactly turn out very often. So 375 is the life of Nelson. Captain A.T. Mahan. The four by the right honourable A.V. Alexander. So there we are, that's a biography to kick us off on this last bit. 376 is profiles from the New Yorker. So Penguin had a bit of a relationship with the New Yorker. And in fact, um, towards the end of the war, they reprinted the short story, well, the short non-fiction story, um, Hiroshima by uh, John Hershey. And that was also first printed in The New Yorker. Um, quite scarce, this one, but I believe there's a follow-up volume, which is even scarcer. Um, now we have another run of super rare crime books, absolutely crazy. So 377 is A Bullet in the Ballet, Carl Brahms and S.J. Simon. Very, very scarce one there, number 377. 378 is Death in the Stocks, Georgette Hare. All of her crime books are super collectible in Penguin. That's a nice copy of that one, isn't it? The lightest hint of wear, 1942, but a particularly gorgeous copy of that one. That in itself is probably the best part of £100, that book. Um, another one by Marjorie Allingham. This is 379. This is Death of a Ghost. Another nice copy of a rare wartime crime title. These really are, uh, can't stress enough just how fragile, but also collectible and gorgeous they are. <laughs> 380, 13 stories. R.B. Cunningham. Cunningham Graham. These are February 1942, these particular ones. Another gorgeous one, which is actually not too uncommon, and that's Orlando by Virginia Woolf. Uh, you'll be able to find copies of these without too much issue. Always nice to have the uh, the Penguin first edition of it. They're an absolute gorgeous copy. I love that advert for Mars on the back. Make Mars last longer. Cut it up into slices. Brilliant, isn't it? Lovely copy of that one. 382 is Meet Yourself As You Really Are. Prince Leopold Lowenstein, whoever he was, eh? Another one of those miscellaneous titles, 382. Next is 383, The General Goes Too Far. As I said before, I've had um, a couple of copies of this one through my hands, and it is a scarce one for sure. Um, I think it's in the top five rare ones of all, uh, number 383. Um, this one's not perfect, but it's not bad, and uh, certainly the best one I've ever had through my hands, 383. Next one took me, this one took me a long time to get my hands on, 384, and this is a William Cook Antique Dealer. Uh, this is another super rare crime book, you know, probably once again the best part of 75 to 100 quid for a copy in that condition. Just, just so rare. Once again, this is another one that I've Took me a long time to find one that was in anything like reasonable shape, and that's the Country House, John Goldsworthy. I think this is about the third copy of this one I've had before I was able to get a half decent, decent one. Um, I know several people still looking for this one, and I've been lucky enough to have had three copies of it through my hands. Um, the last two I've sold both of them for about £125, so uh, this one does tend to. Uh, to go for good money, this particular one. Really nice copy of that one. But that's actually the, the best of the three that I've had. 387 is Whistler. James Leary, don't see this one very often. 
little bit of a uh, dust on that. 388 is Quinny's, another quite scarce one, I believe, this one, and one I wouldn't mind getting a better copy of. As you can see, mine's quite fragile, a bit of loss on the back cover there, but at least I've got one, and that's all that all that matters. 389, last few now, is uh, Scottish short stories, a very thin little book there. 389, I got that one in a, in a bag. 390, Russian fables of Ivan Krylov. Don't know who Ivan Krylov was, but he was evidently big on the Russian fable scene. <laughs> Another very, very uh, fragile little book, this one. 391 is Futility. Look how thin these are. William Gerhardy. Some of that very obscure, I would think, that. Unlike this one, which is an absolute classic, England Made Me. So Penguin published this one from Graham Greene. Um, Pam will get it about 10 years later, but this is the first paperback edition. That's a really beautiful copy of that one. Of England Made Me from March 1943. That's 392. 393 is Selected Tales of Agenon Blackwood. Quite a scarce little, uh, another scarce little book, that one. Took a while to track that one down. This one, fairly, uh, fairly common, but super thin. He Who Came. Not the thinnest penguin, but 96 pages. Um, I think the thinnest of all is the Penguin Handyman. This one's dated 1944 inside, October 1944. So that may well be when it actually got printed. Um, but it fits in numerically at that point. 395 is Henry Williamson, the old stag. Williamson was famous for Tarka the Otter, of course. Here's that second volume of the Penguin Herodotus, which is 396. And this time they have published it in the yellow, as they should have, first time round. 397, I believe, is the last crime book we're going to be looking at today. This is the Bamboo Blonde. So I've had a couple of copies of this one through my hands as well. This is the best one that I've, I've had, 397. And uh, it is still scarce all the same and uh, is in the realm of the uh, 75 to 100 quid brigade on one of those. 398, Elizabeth Bowen, Friends and Relations. A scarce little one. 399, super rare, uh, Rookery Nook. Hardly ever come across this one, and my copy's not great, but I'm, you know, I'm glad to have one, just glad to have one. And then number 400 is a portrait of England, an anthology. So they gave this one, rather than give it to Bernard Shaw yet again, um, this was probably um, quite a patriotic title to issue for the 400th ever Penguin main series title. And that's why they gave it to uh, Christian Mawson. He gave he had the honour of uh, being the 400th ever main series Penguin. And the uh, date inside this one just says February, it just says 1942, but it would have been uh, around that sort of time. So there we go. So that is a particularly rare look at the uh, 300 to 400 penguins. And there's certainly some very, very scarce books in there for you to try and track down. But I hope you have enjoyed looking through my collection of them. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage penguin book content there's loads on my channel and i've got loads more planned and still to come and i shall look forward to seeing you again soon bye